very big all over the country with a lot of problems. And uh, as you are aware, there was a new curriculum that was introduced midway, sometimes back in the former regime when they were almost living. And that prog program has given children and parents a lot of problems. People don't know whether you are in primary school or secondary school or university. You just continue going to school until you find yourself in university. Because all classes, every, there's a mix-up. Parents don't understand it. Children don't understand. So the question I wanted to ask you is, what do you think is the intention of the competency-based curriculum? What do you think was, it is supposed to achieve in your own view? if you have done research or if you have thought over it, as now the man who is to become the minister, if you are approved by the House. And from your own analysis, just tell us three major issues that reveal the education sector and how you intend to handle them. The, the second one, before I conclude, there is this new mo funding med model that has been brought of the universities. And it's supposed to, as it has been put, it's supposed to help the needy and everyone who, and the people who are in need of fees and such kind of things. But as it is today, it looks like it's not working, and it has refused to work. And it has stopped the transition from secondary to university. Many uh, families that are poor, who are depending on help and other models are now suffering. Their children cannot go to school. What are your thoughts on that kind of modeling? Because as far as I am concerned, that model was borrowed from developed countries and fixed here when we have not achieved that level of, of model. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Jeanette. Now, the question that you ask on the three main problems that are bedeviling the education sector is a very important question. And in my view... First, I ask you whether you know what you're getting into. <laughs> I'm coming into it. I'm coming into it, and that's why I've started with that one. Because when I thought about it, I realized that the main problem of the education sector is funding. Each and every problem that you can identify in the education sector its root is funding. Funding in the sense that there is not sufficient money to cover all the programs and all the students in the country. So then I asked myself, just like you've asked me, do I know what I'm getting into? Is this something that I need to do to get in there? And I said, somebody has to do this job. So. If, I'm, if you find that I'm suitable to take this position, my thoughts are the only way to solve the problem bedeviling the whole sector is to find a way of raising enough funds to ensure that the provisions of the Constitution with respect to education are covered. When I thought about it, I realized that there has not been a clear audit to find out, for instance, how many students do we have who need resources? How many funds do we have that cover these students? How many organizations are giving various assistance to these children? How many people are contributing every day towards the school fees of these children in the country. In other words, how much money is the whole country spending on education? So that we can come up to a decision on how that money can be harnessed in order to service the education sector and ensure that all the children in the country are actually get free education as in stipulated in the Constitution. So I said I would take up the challenge, and work with all the stakeholders to find a solution to the funding problem. The second problem that I realized needs to be tackled is there are a lot 
of good policies and good laws in the education sector. But I realize that perhaps we are not adhering to those particular policies. What do I mean? I mean there is nothing in the education sector that is not provided for, but people are not people are not obeying or they are not faithful to those policies. So we have a problem of implementation of those policies, hence the need to find a way of ensuring that implementation is up to date. The question of the new curriculum based, uh, the competency based curriculum that came about, I actually started in 2012. The 844 system it came to replace the 844 system, which was basically exam-based. Exam-based in the sense that you have children doing exams. When they don't pass, the ones who pass go to university or to colleges. The ones who don't pass lose their way in the middle. So it became necessary to come up with a competency-based curriculum that recognizes the competencies and the talents of the chil other children who are, may not be as good as in the exams. That is why it is a, a program that will help, that carries every child along. So it is a good program, but it has not been understood fully by all the parties and all the stakeholders. So one of the things that needs to be done is to unbundle the various elements of that particular CBC and have that information uh, passed on to the public so that they can understand. So there needs to be a lot of sensitization in that area because we are now in that program. Yes, yes, uh, Nelson, uh, has he finished your questions? The the, education, the new education funding model, I'd referred to it earlier. It, is, <laughs> it started last year. It is only one year into operation. We are doing the second year now. It has some teething problems. And of course, one of the challenges that it has is the means uh, testing instrument is not wide enough to capture everybody and to be able to identify everybody's uh, level of income in order to know the children from those homes, what level should, what level of funding should they get from the, the university? So it is working, and it's work work in progress. Nelson, passing. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. And uh, my question, Speaker, this is the most interesting uh, candidate before us on this committee, and this is the reason why I'm saying, Speaker, I've heard him very clearly. And for the, for the whole of his life, now he's remaining with three years for him to attain retirement age, only three years, he has never worked in public service at all. Anywhere, he's not worked in public service. He's, been no, he's not been motivated or what. And in, 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 in getting the suitability speak, uh, speaker and following what Honorable Junet said. He's currently the chairman of Kenya. Just the other day, speaker, that's something, just the other day. <laughs> So I, I, in terms of suitability, honorable speaker, in accordance with section seven, which I want the candidate to be able to explain to this committee and, and maybe to convince me, what motivation has he in public service now, three years to his retire, while he was not motivated for the rest of his life, when he was very, very useful. Remember, honorable speaker, I'm not saying that he's not useful any longer, but to attain retirement age is only three years. Was that a head hunting or was that a reward? I want on, uh, uh, Mr. Miko to you to explain to this committee and the people of Kenya. This is not a joke ministry, as one of the said. It's a, actually, it's a, I don't know what it's to call. And you are coming in during a time when there is com 